all times, your safety remains a priority. Remember A, B, C. Be alert, be brave, and be cautious. This is Sir Kevin A. Domingo for safety and first aid. Safety plays an important role in all aspects of life. It must be given a priority before engaging oneself to any form of activities, may it be physical or recreational. We have witnessed how COVID-19 pandemic brought change in the economy, health, lifestyle and activities among others. We must observe safety protocols and minimum health standards prescribed by IATF and health experts. One of the reminders of health experts in the prevention of the virus is we must make our body and immune system strong. Learners, I have a question to you. What activities have you done to keep your body strong during lockdown? Since we won't be able to go outside during quarantine, I helped with house chores as it can as well be considered exercise because basically it let our body move around. I also used YouTube to help me do some basic exercises and I learned to cook many dishes, especially vegetable since this will truly help us maintain a strong body away from any sickness and I've also found this activity very enjoyable. The pandemic has limited us a multitude of physical activities, but it should not hinder us from keeping our bodies strong and healthy during lockdown. In my case, I keep my body in good shape by eating nutritious foods, hydrating by drinking at least 8 glasses of water a day, having ample time for sleep, and of course, following the mandated IATF protocols to ensure individual and public safety. In this time of pandemic, we should maintain a strong and healthy body. To do this, I will share the three basic routines that I usually do. First is I am exercising or doing household chores to keep physically active. Next, I get enough sleep. It is essential in our physical and mental health which helps our body to function well. Lastly, I eat healthy foods that provide enough vitamins and minerals. So, that's how I maintain a strong and healthy body. The objective of our lesson for today is to explain the importance of observing safety practices in performing sports, exercise, and recreational activities. In this episode, we are going to discover and learn about the physical activity skill preparedness and assessment. But before we continue, let us answer a pre-assessment. Do not worry! It is just a quick review of the concepts you learned about physical activity skills, preparedness, and assessment, which were discussed in your MAPI class in junior high school. All you must do is to read and write the letter of the answer in a sheet of paper. You have 5 seconds to answer each question. Ready? Let's start. Here are the questions. Number 1. What is the ability to use your joints fully through a wide range of motion with ease? Is it A. Balance B. Coordination C. Flexibility or D. Speed The answer is C. Flexibility Question number two. What is the ability of muscles to lift heavy objects exerting force? Is it A. Endurance B. Flexibility C. Power or D. Strength The correct answer is D. Strength Number three. 
What is the ability to use muscles for a long period without easily getting tired? Is it A. Balance B. Cardiovascular endurance C. Muscular endurance or D. Muscular strength The answer is C. Muscular endurance Number 4 which of the following would be the most appropriate fitness test to measure agility? Is it A. Hexagonal obstacle test B. Push-up test C. Yo-yo test Or D. 20-meter sprint The answer is A. Hexagonal Obstacle Test And number 5 Which fitness component does the ankle extension test measure? Is it A. Agility B. Balance C. Flexibility Or D. Muscular Strength The correct answer is C. Flexibility Under the enhanced community quarantine, we are not allowed to go out and do some exercises or even visit the gym to do some workout. It was done to mitigate the spread of the virus. But what is the effect of lockdown to our health? In a study published by U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, about the effects of quarantine on cardiovascular risk related to COVID-19 pandemic, it shows that the main consequence of quarantine is change in lifestyle and nutritional habits of people. It was found out that there is a psychological impact brought about by quarantine to people that includes post-traumatic stress symptoms, confusion, and anger. People became anxious about food shortage in the future. That is why they tend to buy food in bulk that has a long shelf life. We are aware that those kinds of food have preservatives and have fewer antioxidants. It led to weight gain that resulted in acquiring chronic diseases such as hypertension, mild chronic vascular inflammation, and atherosclerosis. In their research, the following has been revealed that Quarantine and isolation are efficacy in reducing diffusion of infection and prevent pandemic. Quarantine and isolation are associated with anxiety, anger, and stress. Anxiety and stress are frequently associated with unhealthy lifestyle. Quarantine induces a reduction of outside exercise and physical activity. Stress as well as depression can induce people to eat and drink to feel better. Learners, let us be reminded that exercise is very important to make our body strong. However, we cannot just do any of them abruptly, especially if they are the ones who tests our endurance, strength, and flexibility. Before doing any form of physical exercise, such as sports and other related movements, it is a must for us to assess the current status of our body. Why is it important and how to do it? Let us start by understanding what physical activity assessment is. According to Kasperson and colleagues 1985, physical activity was defined as any bodily movements produced by skeletal muscles that result in energy expenditure. Physical activity can either be classified as structured or incidental. Structured physical activity or exercise is planned. 
purposeful activity undertaken to promote health and fitness benefits. Incidental physical activity is not planned and usually is the result of daily activities at work, at home, or during transport. There are dimensions and domains of physical activity, which includes the following. First is the mode or type of activity. Second is frequency of performing activity. Third is duration of performing activity. And fourth is intensity of performing activity. Let us define them one by one. Mode refers to the specific activity a person performs such as walking, cycling, cleaning the house, gardening, etc. Frequency refers to the number of sessions per day or per week. Duration refers to the time spent for an activity is done at a specified time frame like day, weeks, or months. Intensity refers to the rate of energy expenditure. It includes our quantified physiological measures such as oxygen consumption, heart rate, respiratory exchange ratio. Therefore, before we engage ourselves to any exercise, sports activities, or recreational activities, we should keep in mind that we should consider the current state of our body. There are methods used in assessing physical activity. We have subjective method and the objective method of assessment. Subjective methodologies rely on the individual, either to record activities as they occur or to recall previous activities. While objective methodologies include or wearable monitors that directly measures one or more biosignals such as acceleration, heart rate, or some other indicator of physical activity or energy expenditure as they occur. To be safe, we must consider the capability of our body in doing any form of physical activity. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Safety and First Aid about physical skills preparedness and assessment. In the next episode, we will continue to discuss the physical fitness that we do in school. Always keep in mind that safety is our main priority. Remember A, B, C. Be alert, be brave, and be cautious. This is Sir Kevin A. Domingo for Safety and First Aid.